Hello, hi, I'm Patricia McNeely. I'm in a Lumens Blu-ray Twin Flame from Chicago, Illinois. I hope you're doing well today. Today, I wanna to talk to you about what this energy is dredging up. And we are in a space right now where the retrograde that we just had is excavating things that may really throw people off. So the topic of this video is to talk about cheating love, cheating in different ways, trust, rebuilding trust, and how do you trust again? Or how do you ever trust because of what you've experienced or what you've been shown? And twin flame love. So it's about cheating trust and twin flame love. We're going to talk about achieving balance and then maintaining your balance. How do you maintain your balance? That gets a little tricky. How do you get some of this stuff out? Okay. So in order to explain some of this to you, I want to talk about uh, something that I saw recently. I went to the Milwaukee Public Museum. For any of you that are uh, up in Wisconsin, this is something that you may or may not know about. They have this exhibit. Now, what do you see that's interesting there? The power of poison. There's a snake. There's some red-tipped nails. Okay. Lifesaver or life taker. Now, there is a long history with poisons in the form of an actual substance. But what about emotional poison? What about the things of the mind, the poison of the mind? Okay. This is all tangled up within people. And it's been subtle. It's been things that have become acceptable in the fourth dimension where people say, well, that's the way it is, or that's our tradition, or, well, that's the cultural thing. We don't even know where it started. Or, well, now we're getting somewhere. Well, men and women just do that with each other. Women do this, men do that. Men use a knife, women use a poison. Do they really? Is that twin flame love? Okay, how do you achieve balance when the cheating poisons people against each other or creates things within your body system? Okay, throws you off balance and something churns in your gut or something affects your heart or you've died of a broken heart. I can tell you that some of the experiences I've had, it has felt like, ugh, ugh, ugh. Ugh. And it's like, wow, 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 you died. And then it happens again. And it's like, wow, 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 you died. And you died and you died and you died of this and you died of that. And meanwhile, there's a part of you that knows that somehow your life was cut short or somehow someone did you wrong or somehow you never want to let that happen again. But how do you do it as a twin flame? Because there are two of you. So this is what makes what I do vastly different than what other people do out there. It's not enough to just say, well, they're narcissists. Because there's plenty of people that would be in their ego and say, well, I'll take that person back. In fact, just this morning, one of the radio talk shows that I listened to, because the guy's hilarious, but... He was having a call in where a man really wanted to date this woman again. And he asked the radio station, please, can you call her and convince her to go out with me again? He really liked her. Turns out she really liked him. But she decided to give the cheater, her boyfriend that had just cheated on her, gave her another, give him another chance. Now, Here's where the dividing line happens between people that are just soulmates and people that are actual twin flames. With your twin flame, you actually do have to give those second and third and fourth chances, all the while knowing how to remove it and how to achieve your own balance and your healing, okay? You need to heal. You have to maintain your balance no matter what you two go through. Meaning you have to catch your balance. You're not here to do this perfectly. 
So one of the things I liked about this exhibit is they talked a lot about, they had part of the exhibit talked about animals, animal toxins, plant toxins, what they do, the evolution of how we view some of those as anesthesia. But what at one time those things were used as a way to turn someone into a zombie or to somehow affect their nerves where they were like a living corpse. They couldn't talk, they couldn't speak. So what's the difference between using it medically? It's taken a lot of trial and error and scientific approach. Now, what if people use toxins as we talk about in myth and legend and story? You have the story of Romeo and Juliet. They each took a poison. They each did it for different reasons. They thought they weren't going to be together. There was an actual tragedy that happened. Those kind of tragedies have happened throughout history. You are not intended to be the couple that continues to have tragedy and drama and the toxic stuff keep happening to you because of these behaviors. So this is also about taking away and we're saying no more of the small harms or poisoning. This includes maiming. This includes mutilation. This includes poisoning people. What can be poison? Well, some people have, have used on the hit in the past, there's a history of other types of birth control. Sometimes it's even birth control has been um, poop from animals. <laughs> That's been a form of birth control. Tragedy, trauma, mutilation, sexual mutilation, people that remove parts of themselves or they've removed it from someone else or they've put a chastity belt on someone else because they can't handle it. They don't trust that person they're with. People have maimed someone. How many stories do we see where someone is thrown acid at someone else or somehow maimed them or scarred their beauty or scarred their manhood or something like that. These things still happen in modern day life because why emotions build up and people lose themselves in it. You are intended to be the couples that do not lose yourself in that stuff to where your ego doesn't say to yourself, well, I'll just roll over and play dead and I'll give that person another chance. You have to know how to remove these things how to clear, how to clear, maintain, and bring balance so that proper healing can begin. So why? Because those things are all part of the fourth dimension where you say, oh, that's a tragic story, or oh my God, they loved them so much. We are changing all the stories. You are shifting the outcomes. You are bringing about a better outcome for yourself. You are bringing success to your physical twin flame union. What if you don't know that person yet? Your body is still going to heal itself properly and you still have to know. So if you have met your twin through dream time or you have met your twin over a distance somehow, whether that's an etheric distance and it's possibly some geographical distance, you're going to still have to heal some of this stuff because your emotions have to be balanced you have to be steering your own ship, okay? And you have to do it from a heart level. That means the high heart. Doesn't mean your heart here. In fact, your human heart can be overwhelmed with all this stuff. Now, this has also been in, uh, they had part of the exhibit, people who have been harmed by other people because of jealousy or rage or inheritances or their dad told them to marry the wrong person or they were betrothed to someone who they didn't like or who was creepy and they decided that they would try the slow poison. A lot of people slowly poison themselves with drugs, alcohol, cigarettes, other forms of toxins that they may not realize they're actually doing that because you are leaving a level where that stuff has maybe not affected you, but your twin flame union doesn't want anymore. You have a brand new body. That is the gift that you are here receiving. 
So you have two bodies, two people, two people that are supposed to connect, spend time together, live with each other, make love together. Love making doesn't start in your lower chakras. So the lower chakra impulses of these type of things that cause toxic behaviors, okay? I've had a number of people I've worked with who've had female circumcision. They were very brave. There is no judgment. I get people back to sensation and feeling because feeling the love in places where the light has not touched you for a long time is a part of my job. I help to do it with essential oils, with herbs, with other things. And mostly through opening your channels. You have channels that connect you only to each other. That is how you reciprocate the energy back and forth. It's how you send the love back and forth. It's also how you repel people and get rid of their stuff. So even if you're not intended to be a healer, or this is new to you, welcome. You're not here to repeat the patterns of the past and be poisoned by them. So this might seem like a strange topic, but believe me, it's very real. I want revenge on that person. I want them to feel what I felt. I want them to feel the rejection. I want them to feel if I'm with someone. I don't want to be married anymore. I wish that person would get hit by a car. I, I, I don't wish them. I just wish something would happen so I can get out of this. It's going to be tough luck for those types of thoughts of the ego because you are going to have to take charge of the situation properly. It doesn't work that way anymore. It has to be appropriate. It has to be above board. And you're still going to see people accused of doing things. You're going to see people accused of touching people inappropriately. You're going to see things blow up for inappropriate behavior. I'm going to bring up another subject here. What about financial infidelity? Have you ever been with someone where they drink all their paycheck? Have you ever been with someone where they're using the money that should go to the household or the kids, but they're using it for other things? Maybe they're gambling. Maybe they're drinking, they're drugging. Maybe they've got someone on the side that they're giving the money to. I've seen those things too. I've seen a lot. And again, my job is to help get this moving from your union and to help you Maintain it, to teach you, to help you, to help you maintain it. So let's talk a little bit about how does this look. I have this other little chart I did. So you're in a level of some very deep healing, okay? This has a lot to do with the misuse and abuse of sex, okay? What is sexual abuse? Well, this could be you know, coercing someone. It's not always rape. It could be coercion. It could be having to maybe pay for your job with a little bit of something on the side with someone at work. This is why work situations are sometimes tenuous for people because there has been sometimes misuse and abuse. What is misuse? Okay. Um, people tricking people into thinking they are pregnant, tricking them into marriage. Oh, yeah, that happens. Have you been deceived somehow? Have you been loved bombed somehow? Has someone loved you and left you and ghosted you? Is there a misuse and abuse of your sex, which is supposed to be sacred? You're getting yourself to a sacred level where those things are not intended to happen to you. If you're allowing it to happen, that's a different story. But if you're not aware that this is not how it is, I'm telling you, that's not sacred sexual. That's not. Being used, being misused, mistreated, abused, abandoned, rejected, that's not it. And that does not define your twin flame union. There's a lot of twin flames who don't do that and they end up together. Their challenge has been other things. But if you've had that in your past lives, that's going to be a challenge perhaps that you need to heal from. And I use the word healing, healing and curing. 
finally getting rid of it, finally removing it so that you're taking out all of the foreign stuff. Anyone that is not you or your twin will be removed from you. And you have to remove it. You can't keep sticking it in. You can't keep putting the knife back in, okay? Or other things. This is deep healing, okay? So for people that have felt that they have been wronged by their culture, their family, their religion, their tradition, um, they may feel that there's a deep healing. You might say, I don't even like the name I was given. I was named for a saint. I don't believe in that religion. I want to call myself something else. Okay, fine. That's good. But if you're intended to detach from it, there's a whole bucket of stuff that will go with you detaching that and to make you healthy, to help you be healthy. You don't have to do it with anger. This is one of the things that is a dynamic with our relationship dynamics. I hear this stuff being said by people that are 12 and 14 years old, except it's also being said by people who are adults. And yet they're still breaking out of these relationship patterns and dynamics. If I make you hate me, will you stop loving me? Okay, that's not a healthy thing, but people do re react in these ways. What is the thing that people do on the playground? They go and do this, right? They grab someone's hair and then they run. They want to get someone's attention, okay? Those kind of dynamics still happen where people want to bait the feminine or bait the masculine. Do you look at people inappropriately? Do they look at you inappropriately? Are you looking at only one body part? And you want to say, my eyes are here. My eyes are up here. And, you know, you find that you're, you're just saying, what the heck is going on? What's going on? Okay. You are the one that is leaving. You are leaving the fourth dimension where some of that stuff is, you know, we've turned a blind eye to it. We can't be blind anymore. Your eyes are open. Love is not blind. Love sees the stuff and sees the baloney and knows that it's baloney. And yet still it does not affect your personal love. So I want to bust that misconcept right now that Thinking that unconditional love means that you roll over on everything that happens. Hell no. No, you're not crazy. Pay attention to how it makes you feel. How does it make you feel? If it is something that you are not intended to tolerate, every cell in you is going to be like, hell no, get off of me, get out. But how do you actually remove it? That is where I help. I help you in an energy session. Now, some of you may have been in the position of doing what I call sleeping with the enemy. Are you with someone that feels more like your opponent? Are they competitive with you? Okay, there's such a thing as healthy competition and enemy. There's such a thing as healthy competition between lovers. And then there's also the stuff where people always want to somehow get back, have the upper hand, keep the other person off balance. Are you in a relationship where you feel like you don't know where you stand? where you just feel like you're constantly being kept off balance. The person plays mind games or something. And yet, are you still thinking you're going to change that through maybe sleeping with them? No. That person is getting what they want. Now, this goes a lot deeper than you may realize. It goes a lot deeper than, you know, if you're getting the milk for free, don't buy the cow. This goes by how do you feel? How is it making you feel? If you're a man, are you feel like you're being manipulated? Do you feel like a woman that you're with just genuinely doesn't like men, doesn't really like men, is derogatory, put downs, little digs here and there? That's not love. That's not love. That is not something you're supposed to tolerate. Yeah, that's happened in the fourth dimension. 
So we are firmly leaving the fourth dimension and the level where these things have happened. It's happened on both sides. Okay. It happens in gay relationships. It happens in lesbian relationships. You know, where you get that, like, she's getting hysterical again. Yeah. I don't know if she must, it must be that time of the month cycle. And, uh, you know, gay men do the same thing, you know, like, oh, why is he being so tough? I swear I can't break through. He's emotionally unavailable. The only time he warms up is, you know, at certain times, every, every time else, it's like, you know, he's cold. He's cold. Relationship dynamics. Are you getting the cold shoulder treatment? Is, is it a cold war in your house sometimes? Do you feel like you're walking on eggshells? Okay, if you are a parent, if you are a parent and you have children, what kind of dynamics are you showing them that are healthy? What do you show your kids that is healthy and well and emotionally stable? Do you have a household that is? Because your twin flame union wants stability for your children. Part of your promise as a parent and bringing those children in is that you will help make some of those wishes in the journey of that child come true. Okay, you may not be in charge of everything, but this includes getting yourself to the level of being a lover and a divine parent. If you are a parent and you're one big stress ball trying to figure it out with your head how you're going to do this, how you're going to do that, and you don't understand that you are leaving a dimension where the answer has usually been no. No, you can't do this. No, you can't have that. No, your child doesn't qualify. No, your child doesn't deserve this. No, you're the wrong color. You're the wrong race. You're the wrong religion. It's just wrong, 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 wrong. Okay, you are the ones leaving that level. You have to be expectant that Small miracles and big miracles will be created by you and your union by aligning yourself. How does it happen? It happens with getting rid of the heaviness of the past and the deep healing. It happens by elevating your love, which is your creative energy, out of the lower chakras to the heart, to the high heart. And this is something that needs some explanation. It needs some guidance. There are parts of you that connect. There are parts of you that are masculine and feminine. The divine masculine, I'm going to tell you, it's twined within you. It's twined within each gender body. It's inside men. It's inside women. However, men, you have to be able to give them trust, acceptance. That means accept them for who they are. Accept that they may have some flaws. Accept that they may make mistakes. Accept that they may be on their part of their journey, and yet they're going to get there. I recently had a couple that I've been working with, and the man in the union actually really, really wanted to go rough it and go off the grid. And this was the way he was seeing it, okay? He went for two days. And during that time, it was his small journey of self-discovery, but he came back stronger. And she, his female twin, she was very worried, of course, naturally, you know, because you're out, anything could happen. But there needs to be trust there. Achieving trust, okay, trusting that he's not going to be harmed, trusting that he's not out cheating or drinking or something like that. Trusting he's going to be protected. Trusting that he's the other half of her and that the same higher self that is guiding her is guiding him too, maybe in a different way. But still getting them to the same destination. You have to be able to give up control and focus on the things that you are capable of focusing on at any given moment. And if that means you, then that's you. If it's you and your body stuff and maintaining what you've achieved, do not lose ground on it. So I have several things to be able to help you with this. Okay. I have my book, Your Subtle Body Connections. This is a very good beginning book. This is the first book in my series. This is about clearing. All right. You have it written here. 
It's about clearing, maintaining, and balance so that deep, deeper healing can begin. You'd be amazed at the things you'll experience doing it. The book is intended to help people clear no matter what kind of profession or calling that you're in. Does It's not just for people that are healers. It's for you to do some self-guided stuff, okay? There are There is the beginning breath exercise in there to get your channels open so that you can channel things to each other. You are channeling love. You are outputting anything that you don't want to keep. You need to be able to expel it and transmute it. You need to be able to breathe from three different levels. You need to be able to maintain yourself. So that's in that. I also have a class coming up on April 7th, Leaving the Fourth Dimension. It is in three parts. It's one price in three parts. We're going to cover fear, thought forms, organ and chakra upgrades in the first one, nightmares, past life tragedies, rituals, morphic resonances of stuff, how to move forward with your twin and not backwards. Okay, believing in your union. How do you do that? Um, releasing negative emotions and blocks. Okay, now this is something that people struggle with. You might realize and know yourself well enough. Hey, I'm having a negative emotion. Okay, we usually don't say that. We usually say like, oh, where is this coming from? Like, that's not me. Like, I hate feeling like this. Why am I feeling this again? right? That's what we do. Or, God, I feel like I'm dying again. Gosh, I want to give up. This is this journey. It, it's like, it's like knocking the wind out of me. Like, I, I hate it. I, I don't like this. I don't want it, right? We say it. Everyone says it. Every season, there's someone who says, see you because I can't handle it right now. It's not about handling. It's about knowing the difference as to when your higher self is doing for you. And the things that you need to do. That's what I cover in my class on leaving the fourth dimension. You're not expected to do everything from the human level. You cannot. The human side of you will fail. The human side of you has flaws. The human side of you has biology that you inherited from grandma and grandpa that inhibits certain things. Do you know the cause of you know, some of the things in your family. You may or may not, but the bottom line is that you inherited some of those things. So this is about inheritances, money inheritances, estate inheritances, and the biology that you inherited that you're intended to heal from and not have it ever happen again, okay? Because unconditional love means those things are not a condition. So look in the description below in my YouTube. Look for the links below. Join the class. I have the um, roomie for you. Do not worry that your life is turning upside down. How do you know that the side you are used to is better than the one to come? So that is actually a roomie poem. That's an excerpt from a roomie poem. Take that as your guide. Join my class. Have a session with me. Have an energy session. You will find out you cut to the chase. You feel better exponentially. Ooh, I get you going. And thank you for watching. Have a good day. Bye.